In this video, I'll be discussing a statistical technique known as bootstrap resampling, which is a, a method that allows uh, us to assign or, or, or measure the error in a statistic that we've computed from a sample distribution. So it allows us to compute errors on our estimators. And the beauty of bootstrap resampling is that it's a very simple technique and allows us to estimate these errors without any knowledge of the parent distribution um, from which our samples are drawn. So you imagine we have some sort of parent distribution, which I've denoted here as F, and we take from that distribution uh, sort of n observations or n samples. You imagine we have sort of x1, let's say, is, is 2, x2 here is maybe 5, x3 is 7, x4 is 7 again, all the way down uh, to xn. So what we end up with is a vector of sort of n observations, x1 all the way out to xn. And from this distribution, uh, the sample distribution that we have of our observations, our n observations, we would like to know the uh, a certain statistic or an, an estimator, which I'll denote here as a theta hat, which is just found by applying some function s to our vector of observations. And s here could be the mean of x, it could be the median, maybe the, the, the standard deviation, it could be, or it could be something much more complex. Uh, it's sort of very generic. And we would like to know how theta hat compares to the true, beta, true value of theta. So we like to get an estimate of the error that we've made in our estimating uh, the true value of theta. And the beauty of bootstrap resampling is that it allows you to do that um, if, if each of these x's that we have are drawn from identical parent distributions and they're all independent of each other then we can do this, uh, we can compute this error via bootstrap resampling. Uh, so we compute a bootstrap, uh, a bootstrap sample, which I'll denote as x star, which we compute via uh, sampling from the original vector x, but we do that with, uh, with replacement. So we choose, say, randomly. First we get, say, x4. Then we get x1. Then we get uh, x3. Maybe we get uh, x1 again. So we sample with replacement. So we can get the same values more than once. All the way out to sort of to x uh, to some xn. So this is a of length n vector. So I'll denote this as the first. Uh, this is the first bootstrap resample we've done, and then from this bootstrap resample we can do the same estimator, and compute uh, s of x one star. And this provides a different estimate of our true value theta, or the true um, the true value of the estimator. So I'll call this uh, x. This is now uh, theta hat one star. And we don't want to do this just once, but we want to do this. Uh, 
a lot of times in order to build up a distribution of our theta hats, or a distribution of our estimators. Uh, and from that distribution of our estimators, we can compute, uh, we can get a measure of the, the, the variability or the error. Uh, the width of that distribution will tell us something about uh, the typical error that we've made in measuring theta hat. So we start with our data vector here, uh, which is a length n sample, uh, length n samples, and we create b bootstrap resamples, uh, where b is going to be something like, uh, for accuracy's sake, 1,000 or maybe uh, 10,000. So it's going to be a very large number in order to reduce the, the error in our uh, in our, our random, the random error in our in our calculations. So we create B bootstrap samples uh, denoted here as X star and each of these X stars were chosen or were computed by sampling uh, with replacement from our original array or sample vector such that we could get the same sample value in a given array more than once. And from our 10,000 or, or 1,000 statistics that we've computed from our bootstrap, bootstrap samples, we now get a, a, we can plot a histogram of those samples. And if uh, n is large, where n was the original length of our samples, then we'll get something that looks very Gaussian, uh, just by the central limit theorem. And we have some mean and some width here. And we can compute this width uh, just as the standard deviation of, uh, of this set of S, uh, this statistics, this set of statistics that we've computed from our bootstrap samples. And if we say that the, this resampled distribution of our estimators is uh, centered at this S, uh, S bar here, then we can compute the, the width of our distribution just via the standard uh, variance formula where we uh, compute the, the squares of the residuals of each of our, each of our uh, resampled statistics. And this is a, a very powerful technique because uh, we've assess the sort of properties of our underlying parent distribution without actually knowing the or using the the knowing the shape of that parent distribution um, so it's a technique that's very advantageous when uh, the theoretical distribution from which we draw our samples is complicated or or unknown or cannot be computed analytically and it's worth mentioning that in the uh, case of small n, we could end up with a distribution that looks more remarkably non-Gaussian. So we could have some sort of tail like this. Uh, and in that case, the, the statistic that we've computed, uh, this sigma, sigma boot, uh, this bootstrap error, doesn't have the normal sort of standard deviation of a normal or Gaussian distribution doesn't have the same connotation. So uh, in the case that n is uh, small, if you want to find, say, a confidence interval, say the 95% confidence interval on your original uh, estimator, what you will want to do is not compute the probability distribution, but uh, where this is, so this is the probability distri distribution, you would want to compute uh, the resampled uh, cumulative distribution. So you could uh, plot the, 
the CDF, the cumulative distribution function, which might look something like this, where it goes up to one here. And from that, you can say, if you want to know the, the let's say, 90% confidence interval, you could find the values where, uh, let's say, 5% are greater than this value and 5% are greater than uh, down there, and then 5% are up here. So uh, what you can end up doing is uh, establish those same sort of confidence intervals, but by using the resampled cumulative distribution function and not the uh, probability distribution. But in the case of large n, uh, your sigma your one sigma error, which is the 68.3% confidence interval for a, a Gaussian distribution, will agree with this percentage interval that you've computed from the CDF. And lastly, you might be wondering what the value of B, the number of bootstrap resamples you would you need to use in order to minimize the uh, the the error in our estimate of uh, sigma boot here. And it turns out you can show that the, the variance in our error estimate has terms that are proportional to 1 over n squared, where n squared, or n here is the length of our original sample array. So this is due to sampling variance. And the second term that con con uh, contributes is 1 over n times b, where this is due to the resampling error. So you can see that in the small n limit, we, cr we uh, measure a very a noisy estimate of the error on our original statistic just because we've sampled the parent distribution poorly because n is small uh, we can't recreate the parent distribution well and the second reason that we can uh, have error in our sigma boot in our bootstrap sigma is that we uh, just random error due to not enough resampling uh, bootstrap sample distributions and typically what is done is B is something like uh, 1,000 or 10,000 to 10,000 um, in order to reduce this second term in the variance. Uh, but really it, B should be the, the lar just the largest possible value it can be uh, given time constraints and computing power uh, for, uh, for any individual case. So uh, this really shows that in, with the advent of, of computing, we can compute a, a, uh, an estimate of the error and uh, confidence intervals for a statistic using no, uh, using no knowledge of the theoretical or analytical parent distribution that our samples were drawn from just by uh, using this resampling uh, with replacement technique.